Hey, welcome in. This is uh, part two of an Out of the Park 19 tutorial. This is a, uh, a specially requested tutorial. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. This is uh, for Todd B., but for anybody else, I think other people have asked questions about drafting. Uh, Todd had made the comment, um, I would streamed a game last night in Action PC Baseball, and uh, I was checking between innings, as you guys know. Right now, I only have one screen uh, set up, um, which I'll detail when I get back to America why that is. Uh, but uh, somehow the conversation got on to out of the park baseball and drafting, and Todd had made, I believe it was Todd, that made the uh, comment, or, or it might have been Elit Mike, I'm not sure, saying that it was a real pain to bring in or download uh, players uh, individually if you wanted to do a draft. Um, one of the things with out of the park baseball, and it is, in my opinion, the most feature rich, uh, accurate, and, and I know I'm going to get heat from other people, but there is, a, I'll talk about accuracy during the creation of this league. <clears throat> uh, this is followed closely, though, number two, by Action PC Baseball. So I play out of the park baseball, Action PC Baseball, and Diamond Mind, which I broadcast the games, and then App of Baseball for Windows, um, I use, uh, or Ernie Harwell actually calls the games. I'd love to do a tutorial on that. There's only one other person I know that uh, I think plays the game, um, and he only ever used it once. He's strictly a cards and dice guy. Um, and unfortunately, though I'm a supporter of his channel, he's not a supporter of mine, which is rather, um, well, that happens in communities. Some people have chips on their shoulders, and it is what it is. So you know who you are. Um, and I've been asking you, calling you out, let's settle this if it's private messaging or whatever, but you choose not to, and, you know, life goes on, right, bud? Good luck, follow your bliss. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, drafting, creating leagues, whether you want, um, let's say, for instance, you want to create um, a sort of draft league or whatever using historical, real historical teams. From all eras of baseball, you can do that. Now, Todd B. had asked if he wanted to do a draft between the years 1977 and 1982. So I should actually say 1977 to 1982 inclusively using real players and fictional teams. Now, one of the things about Out of the Park Baseball that they've been working on through all uh, 19 iterations of the title plus season ticket baseball 2003, which was um, actually released by Sega, although again developed by Out of the Park. Uh, they just did that one year. It was actually a physical disc. So there's technically 20 versions of Out of the Park baseball, and season ticket is a tiny bit different. Very very minor differences. Um, is the user, inter user interface? Now, through the years, um, this hasn't been the easiest interface to use. Um, I'll admit that. And some night, I'm going to stream an Out of the Park 8 game. Now, that's freely available, um, and that one relies strictly on play-by-play. -play. There's absolutely no animation, anything whatsoever. Um, however, it's a superb, it's a superb game, and it's free, so you have nothing to lose. Um, I'm I'm just having fun with it a little bit, doing a uh, playing around with a 1905 Giants replay and a 1912 Red Sox replay, but I rarely, rarely go into it. But I may do a comparison uh, video so that you guys can show. So I'll do a game maybe using the 1912 Red Sox in that one. However, <coughs> and you'll pardon the coughs, I smoke too much. Uh, let's get into this. So we see here, and uh, you can see new standard game. So this is where you start. This is just one click, and you're right into the 2018 season. We're not interested in that. Now down here, new custom game. There's really a lot you can do with this. This might be called the complete sandbox of Out of the Park 19. And when I used to do these draft leagues, this is what I did. However, it's this one here. And actually, this is the one that I use most because I mainly do season replays. 
So you guys who are following me, you know that right now um, I'm doing the 1934 replay, mainly of the St. Louis Cardinals, the Gas House Gang, but also I'll be featuring other teams when I see uh, certain matchups that I think you guys would like to see uh, from that year or just from two franchises, right? So uh, maybe it'll be a Dodgers-Giants game. Maybe it'll be a Red Sox-Yankees game, uh, something like that. Okay, but here's one of the things that Out of the Park needs to fix. If you see under here in the small red print under the larger new historical game, <clears throat> it says play any historical season 1871 to 2017. Of course, this will change with Out of the Park 20, and it will say 2018 um, if you want to do that because we'll be in 2019 season. But that's not readily apparent. So you're thinking, okay, so I'm going to go in. And I'm going to pick, you know, 1971 because I'm a Pirates fan and I'm going to replay the 1971 season with, you know, Willie Stargell and Roberto Clemente and, and all those great players. But actually within new historical game, this is the easiest way, Todd and Alit Mike, uh, to set up your draft league. So let's get started and we're going to do new historical game. Um, I never do challenge mode. Uh, challenge mode is basically, uh, it's a kind of bragging rights thing. Uh, this preceded perfect team. Uh, I don't use it. It has nothing to do with your leagues whatsoever. Um, even if you're playing other players online and you're actually playing out games, challenge mode really has nothing to do with that. Uh, it, it actually limits certain things so that everybody's on a playing field. Um, there's some, some things you can do, but I find it just, yeah, eh. Two things I don't like about Out of the Park 19 Baseball, uh, or don't care about, I should say, or Challenge Mode. And I also don't care about Perfect Team. <clears throat> Perfect Team, to me, basically is Magic the Gathering, uh, <laughs> using uh, Major League Baseball player cards that come in booster packs and well, I play Magic the Gathering. I've done uh, a video on a program called Forge, and I'll probably do more, even though those didn't get a lot of likes. I'm doing the channel for fun. So anyhow, let's get on to this. So you just click No Thanks. All right, so here we go. This is important. If anything, this is probably uh, maybe the most important screen. So we're in the Historical League Creation Wizard. Okay? Now you see here that we have choices. So if we just want to do a season, you want to do a straight up season replay, you would choose one of the eras of baseball that they've broken down. Uh, there's only one other program I've ever seen do this, and that's um, old time baseball, which I've done a video of. Uh, that was put out in the mid 90s. So they actually split baseball into its proper eras. Um, although I would actually extend dead ball from 1893 uh, to 1920, but that's just picking nits, isn't it? Okay, and then, so then you would pick to say, all right, so this has nine, a, a baseball boom, 1961 to 69. Then you come over here and just select your season. Okay, we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want to do is select this. Use random players from all eras instead of real rosters. Okay, so this is going to select. All right, now we're going to do our uh, minimum and maximum years. Now I'm going to set this to 1977. Now what that does, and this is really important, is this just gives you the league structure for 1977, but that league structure is going to be populated by random players from all eras instead of real rosters. Now, the next one, select minimum and maximum years, and we can go to show advanced options if you want. So, and, and we'll talk about all these as we go down, okay? So we can select minimum and maximum years. If I don't touch these, okay, then what it's going to do using that 1977 structure, so whatever teams, and you're going to see in step two or step three, the actual Chicago White Sox name and Pittsburgh Pirates uh, Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, what have you. All right, but no minimum, no maximum means it's going to pull players 
from the entire history of baseball, from the National Association, beginning in 1871, all the way up to 2017, Major League format, okay? But we don't want that, right? Todd has said that he wants 1977 to 1982. So for no minimum, we're actually going to select the minimum, and we're going to scroll. And again, one of the wonderful things here, guys, is out of the park baseball, you get every season, every season, no maximum. Again, we want to change that because now if we do no maximum, it's going to be 1977 to 2017. That's not what Todd wants. All right, so we're going to go to 1982, and yes, we're going to scroll down, and there it is. Okay, so we're set here. Now, select Path to Database. This already defaults. There are two databases in Out of the Park Baseball. Leave this alone. This goes to the Master Database. This is the one that you want to use. It does supply the Sean Laman Database, which is excellent as well. Other programs use it. Um, I think that the Out of the Park um, Database is better for Out of the Park. Base current ratings on their real stats. So we're going to just leave it at real stats. Peak seasons of career. So we'll talk about this one for a second. And Action PC, um, well, I'm, I'm going to talk about Action PC and a game that uh, that, that uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of, even though I own it and will never stream it, and that's Strat PC Baseball. So you see it says peak seasons of career. Well, Action PC Baseball and Stratomatic Baseball have two seemingly similar products. However, the similarity is only cosmetic. So what each has done is they've created um, a sort of uh, all-time database, right? Every player who ever played database, right? So that sounds pretty cool. So you're thinking, geez, if I buy either Action PC uh, or Strat PC Baseball, I have everybody that has ever played. Well, yes, you do, but... And this is this conjunction is huge. Here's the difference. Strat PC baseball, what you do is, is is what you get are the career totals of everybody who's ever played the game and of course who's retired. Uh the other thing of course is with Strat PC not having um the major league baseball <clears throat> um licenses or the major league players baseball or players association licenses um and and they're being really strict and uh in my opinion to avoid slander they are stupid in my opinion um you, you don't actually get the real team names during the play-by-play -play. so you'll get things like the the uh pittsburgh buckos not the pittsburgh pirates and if you try to change the names uh in the play-by-play -play, you're still not going to get that but here's the thing. What happens with career totals is it actually hurts the best players of the game. So um, outliers, guys that played a few years, will actually tend to perform better in those types of things than players like Lou Gehrig or Jimmy Fox or Hannes Wagner, Willie Mays, Ken Griffey, uh, senior and junior, because Ken Griffey Jr., of course, retired, Hall of Famer, all that. Action PCs is better. So what I would suggest for you is to get Action PC Baseball and get their Baseball History Project. What that does is it takes what's called a peak slice of a player's career. So what it does is it will take a peak slice, and that's, that's a minimum of three years. Now, the longer a player played, the fewer peak seasons are taken. So it actually gets you very, very close to how that player um, actually performed. All right. So you're not getting that player's whole career. Okay. So that's really important. So I'm just giving you a little advice there for anybody who's considering, and let's face it, we're baseball junkies. Um, I know Elliot Mike said that he's like me. Baseball is the only sport he follows. That's the same with me. Uh, boxing, of course, I am familiar with. So I like boxing. Um, I follow it only when our Red Sox fan or Ron Juckett are doing um, boxing calls and uh, title bout boxing, and I'm toying with maybe buying it, but uh, I have to feed the baseball addiction. So peak seasons of career, 
is basically going to be doing the same thing that the Action PC Baseball History Project does. And by the way, one last thing, the Baseball History Project um, is an absolute bargain um, in, uh, in Action PC Baseball. Uh, for other reasons, and again, I would, I would tell you just do not, do not get the, uh, it's called the Career History Disc from Stratomatic Baseball. It is, in my opinion, uh, virtually useless unless you're just playing for fun and you don't care for really any sort of accuracy because you're not really going to get it, right? Because you're going to get Babe Ruth's 1936 season or you're going to get Lou Gehrig, right? His 1939 season where by June he was out of the lineup and he only batted 143 that year. Well, that weights down. Right. The great 1936 season that Gary had, the great, you know, well, the great 1927 season is example for Babe Ruth or what have you. OK, so leave this selected. Now, then you can base again on a three year period on a three year period. It's going to pick those best ones uh, for this. We will import real uh, left, right, lefty, righty splits. <clears throat> it's important to note, however. Um, that real left-right splits are not available for the whole history of baseball. So back in the dead ball era um, and into the 20s and 30s, my favorite era, um, also I guess I should include 19th century, though these games aren't really built around being able to play with 19th century rules because they were constantly in flux until 1893, which is considered the first year of what we call Modern baseball with the four, uh, four balls as a walk rule, three strikes, the foul strike rule um, comes into effect thanks to uh, Wee Willie Keeler's expertise at fouling off bunt after bunt after bunt after bunt. So he could stay up there forever till he got what he wanted. Well, that was changed. Um, so there's a little history for you guys. Um, again, you can base your I, – I, I, I usually leave these alone. <clears throat> Again, you can see entire career is not gonna is not gonna be a good thing. You could do it on important season. You could do it on important season here, uh, but I really think you're just best right here. You're gonna get a good representation of your players. Okay, so we will get real lefty righty splits. Okay, uh, for people who sort of believe in platooning, I am still not convinced that platooning. Um, is is all that good? I'll do respect to Casey Stengel. Um, certainly knows a hell of a lot more base about baseball than I do, but he also had the advantage of managing great Yankee teams <coughs> and thus introducing platooning. However, that didn't work so well with the 1962 Mets that uh, that Casey, the old professor, managed. Um, think about it, right? You've got Jimmy Fox up there, okay? Are you going to platoon Jimmy Fox out because the defense has switched to pitcher? There's no way. I'm going to stick with Fox. He's a beast, right? Except for two rainouts in 1928, he would have at least tied Babe Ruth's 60 uh, season home run record and may have actually beaten it. So just a year later. So no, I'm not going to platoon out Fox personal. But anyhow, you will get the real lefty righty stats because they are available for 1977 through 1982. So down here, you can adjust players with fewer than X. X equals numbers of bats. So if you don't want any outliers in your league, 300 is a good number because this is going to bring in utility guys. Um, you do weekend hitters with fewer than 50 at bats. You can do, I, I would say again, leave that where it is. These are really, really, really good defaults. Same with pitchers. Okay, so these are good. All right, so you have all this set up. <coughs> Remember, all you're doing here, once we have selected random players for all eras instead of real rosters, we've selected here. This gives us league structure. This has nothing to do with what the, the player pool. The player pool is here. And as Todd requested, 1977 to 1982. Remember, okay, to show advanced options to make sure that you are all set up here. These are usually at default. But you do want to make sure uh, you have this checked or unchecked where you want it. And again, feel free to play around with this, obviously. All right. 
That's step one. This is so important, all right? This Todd, and I'm you know directing this to you, my friend. In fact, Alexander, you asked about draft leagues as well. So um, my good friend Alexander Ruffini, Space Engine Chill, check out his channel. It's awesome. Okay, so this is the key right here, guys. Check this. Set your minimums and maximums. All right, let's go to the next step. Okay, so the database is being loading. So, Todd, you can see now there's whatever downloading and importing, it's happening right now. Okay, um, I don't use minor leagues at all. I just I don't use them for these types of things. You can if you want, uh, but again, if we're we're talking about this sort of thing, well, are they really meaningful? Because you're man you're going to be managing fictional teams, right? And you're going to be holding a draft, and we'll talk about the draft. You can actually um, there's there's you can do as much or as little with the draft as you want. All right, so I don't use minor leagues. You can, okay. All right, so step two, boom. So again, because I don't use these, I don't use this, okay. I would say that if you were doing very, very early baseball, you're going to require maybe minor leagues, a feeder league, um, if you will. So step two, done. Next step, <coughs> we have player development. Now, Again, you can change this. Um, usually you can disable this if you're doing replay leagues. If you want to consider this uh, as a replay league, you can do so. Again, I don't touch this because I usually, I, I'm not interested in dynasties. I know, Alexander, you are. So if you, if, or if any of you guys, so Todd, if you guys decide, well, geez, I kind of like the team that uh, I drafted. I'd like to see what they do from year to year. Then... Just leave this alone. I'd leave it alone anyhow because it doesn't matter. At the end of the season, in the World Series, it's over. And, you know, I, I'll keep the league on the hard drive maybe for a little while. But, you know, I usually don't go back and revisit. Or I might go back and redo a draft. Okay, automatically expand league. Leave this checked. Again, if you want to go, um, you know, into an expansion. Now, however... And, there, there, of course, there were expansions. So if you want to do this, you can if you're playing multi-season. Okay. Again, uh, you know, or a dynasty thing or whatever. So I'm going to uncheck that. And automatically, there's not going to be an expansion draft. Also, and I'm going to make this, and this is to all you guys out there who might be happening across this. And I'm probably going to get some thumbs down for this. Tough. Too many people have said that out of the park baseball is strictly... A financial sim. Well, you're idiots. There. Plain as day. You've got it right from Beatles Eternally. You're idiots. You've done absolutely no research on this game. This game, you can do strictly just a replay at one season, just like you can do an action PC baseball, like you can do a National Park 3, as you can do an inside pitch, as you can do in Strat, as you can do an app box. Right? You don't have to touch financials at all. So stop being idiots. Either that or just keep spending thousands of dollars and pray that, uh, you know, whatever game of choice is going to release the season you want. So I will say that Action PC has every season available you're going to pay. Dave has frequent sales though. Um, but yeah, stop being idiots. It's not a GM game. It can be if you want it to be. Out of the park can be what you want to be, all right? So don't be idiots. Anyhow, I don't use these. What's the point? I want to play, right? I'm pretending I'm Todd now. I just want to draft players from 1977 to 1982, root players on fictional teams. I don't care about hot dog prices. I don't care about salaries. I don't care about whatever. I, I really don't care. So I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so we're at step three out of five. So we have all this set. Now we go to next step. And again, sorry guys, I, I don't mean to, uh, I'm just tired of getting, out, of, of, of seeing out of the park baseball. And no, I'm, you know what? I don't have two pennies to rub together. I gave up a PhD, guys, like an idiot, all right? So I have no money. So I don't have any stake in out of the park baseball, except that this is a fantastic baseball simulation that has eclipsed Diamond Mine Baseball, which was a long time, the king 
of baseball simulations used by ESPN and Major League Baseball to forecast seasons. This is now the Huckleberry. This is it. Okay, so for scouting accuracy, uh, player actual rating scale, you'll see this weird 20 to 80. This is a rating scale that's actually used by professional baseball in the minors and the majors. Makes no sense to me. You can leave them like this if you understand it. I, 20 to 80, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's similar to the 10-point must system in boxing where you have a 10 to 9 round or 10 to 8 round. Maybe that's what that is. I don't know. I really, really don't know. Now, so you can you can select again your rating scales. Personally, I like 1 to 100. Al likes 1 to 10. Um, I would say each has their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, 1 to 10 gives you a quick, like, okay, yeah, so this guy is a 7 out of 10 base stealer. Uh, this guy is an 8 out of 10 uh, contact hitter. So that gives you a nice, quick assessment of that player. I like, I, I think 1 to 20 is a little weird. I like 1 to 100 because I want more nuanced. Well, 7 out of 10, but to me, there's a difference between a guy who's a 70 and a guy who's a 79. Baseball is a game of numbers. Therefore, I use 1 to 100. Okay, and I use, for their potential, also 1 to 100. Okay, I like these to match up. Okay, let's get to face gen. And again, sorry, I'm going to do a short homily here, or for you Protestants, a sermon. Here's the deal. Face gen is the curse of baseball simulations. Those of you who uh, maybe maybe out of the park developments is listening to this. Sorry, guys. But, you know, when I saw Hannes Wagner with mutton chops, uh, <laughs> right? And, 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 and what was it? Dave Clark was, or uh, Dave, yeah, Dave Parker was white and, 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 and whatever. You know, face gen might work for newer players, but frankly, it looks really cartoonish. It's awful. I suggest you guys download the real player photos. You can find them on the Action PC uh, baseball boards. You can find them in another number of other places as well. Turn off face gen, right? It's awful. So when you come into this, so like me, so all my games are already set up for no fictional pictures because I disabled face gen. You can... But if you select any of these other things, then it's going to use face gem. So turn off. No, if you have, right, the actual players. And I can do another video if you want and show you how to download um, and install pictures and all that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, for ballparks, and I'll talk about, I'll remind you again, for ballparks, please check my part one video of Out of the Park. Uh, where I show you how to install ballparks. Okay, so please go back and refer to that because I may only touch on that briefly. Coach pictures, no fictional pictures. You're usually only going to see coach pictures anyhow uh, when you're looking at your team home screen and usually the coaches, there's no pictures for them anyhow. This doesn't matter based on color mode because you're not using it, so it doesn't matter whether you have it normal black and white or sepia just doesn't matter we're almost there guys so we're going to go to um let's just let's go to our next step here okay so here's what's going to be fun right right now we're seeing right real names well todd says but no no i want fictional teams pretty easy to do there you go look at this now they're randomized I can keep randomizing all day if I want. So let's see. Baltimore Wave Riders. I kind of like that. And here's another nice thing, guys, is, right, this game comes with something like 800 logos. So everybody from the majors, all these other, um, you know, from minor leagues, stuff like that. But also, the game actually generates logos. And you can create your own. And here, hint, hint, I'll even do it for free for a little while. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a graphic artist. I'll create logos for you if you'd like for your teams. But there's so many you can choose from. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit advanced mode, but this is important because this can kill all this work that you've done if you don't enter a game name. Okay. 
So I'm going to do 1977, we'll just call this 1977, it's 1982, um, the draft, okay? The starting year, 1977, auto save once here, it's fine. Uh, your name, nationality, nice little touch. And yes, that is correct, by the way. Um, I'm just going to pop this into commissioner mode because I want to show you some different things you can do. Uh, and I'm also going to do cannot be fired. Uh, the only reason I'm kind of doing this is not only do I like job security, um, but with this kind of league, I think you have enough of a challenge. Uh, so, <clears throat> But if you want the extra challenge and you're feeling froggy and you want to leap, go ahead and leave this unchecked. Okay, let's look at, at advanced mode before we actually get in because we're going to be able to start our game. But first it says start unemployed. Well, we could do that. But Todd says, well, you know, I at least want the city of Baltimore. Okay. There you go. Now you are employed by the Baltimore Wave Riders. So far we just have teams, but none of these, <laughs> the Toronto Turtles. Yikes. Anyhow, uh, it's too bad you can't randomize the nickname there for them at once. Uh, but, but there are no players yet, right? The draft hasn't been held. So let's look at advanced mode. Okay. So we see that there's, there's its name. Okay. We can, um, again, if you want to review your settings, you can do this. Okay. So reports retired players. Remember, here's our rating scales. Okay. Um, all player ratings are displayed, uh, relative to currently selected league. So again, you can get all this. Now remember, Player pictures, no fictional pictures. Set this for on demand. <clears throat> Update players always if needed if you want. Coaches, players, for again, no fictional pictures. I know I'm going through a lot here, but I'm going to make sure you've got this. Because it's actually easy, but as an educator, um, with, with, a, uh, with an advanced degree in instructional design and interactive teaching and online teaching, I believe and flooding you with information. I would rather give you too much than too little. And you may have questions, and that's fine. Please post your questions in the comments. Um, I also want to tell you that this is the way I create these types of leagues. I should also tell you I rarely do them. I am more interested in doing great team matchups and single season replays. Um, but these can be fun because you never know what you're going to get, right? And yes, you were expecting the Forrest Gump box of chocolates thing. Uh, nope, sorry. You can turn off owner goals. Again, if you're just doing a season, yeah, big deal. Or you might want to leave them on. I would say leave the coaching system on. Okay. Enable injuries. Um, you can ha you can set this for what you want. I just leave them at low. Just just you can leave all of this pretty much. At default suspensions are fun why not personality ratings this has to do with the chemistry system that's in um, out of the park baseball and I'm not talking about uh, valence or anything but how well people get along with one another so we know that for instance on the 1908 Cubs uh, tinker to Evers to chance uh, those guys really didn't like each other a lot so this would actually in the 1908 season you leave this checked and that will play itself out um, all the stuff, really, it, you can play with this, but that's not that's not the focus of this. But I just, again, I want to, I'm just flooding you, okay? All right. So if we go to teams. Okay, there's here's our setup, as you can see. You can, of course, rename all these that you want. Um, that's really, really, really up to you. That's that's not me. You can set where they're from and everything like that. And actually, here, here you go. If you don't want them to be the turtles, uh, let's call them the oh, geez, I don't know, what, 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 something the Toronto, uh, the hmm, the yeah, you know what? They're just gonna be the Toronto Canadians. It's a beautiful city. So there, Toronto Canadians there. So if you don't like those. If you don't want to be Baltimore, Wave Riders, change it. If you want to change division names, do what you want here. Okay? So we're going to go to rules. This is the rules of your league. So you can have your active roster size to, at 25 players. At 40, you can set it at 40. I would suggest just uh, leave this 25 players. 
I hate the designated hitter rule. However, I know you American leaguers um, who have yet to be converted to the true religion of the National League and the excommunication of the abomination of the designated hitter. So you can enable or disable. I'll leave it enabled because I'm a nice guy and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, you can have, again, this is all this kind of stuff. And, and, and again, what's nice through all of this, you can still, right, you, you can review what you've done. Again, pay no attention. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, just financials. This means nothing because we've turned off financials, right? Okay, so, uh, right, if you want to do this, I don't want people to have that right, right? So if you really, really want to do that, uh, you can enable trading. However, just know that the AI will trade, okay? So, and but that means you can also trade as well. So tell you what, we'll leave it on. Uh, it just trades with other major leagues. Well, yeah. Okay. The 10-5 rule, they have the right to veto trades. Again, your choice. I'm going to leave it alone because we just want to get into the game. All right? Um, let me see. Let's make sure that we have... Uh, I'm not going to do anything with a feeder league. Okay? Just not going to... We're going to skip financials. We're going to go to options. Allow rainouts. Come on. You want a real, you want a real thing. First thing, though, right here. This is really important. Make sure you have this checked. Inaugural Fantasy Draft. Make sure you check. Hold draft. Okay? Got to do that or else this is really pointless, isn't it? Okay? Uh, again, if you want to hold an all-star game and automatically schedule it, again, leave this on. This could be really, really fun. Okay? So do this. Break ties with tiebreaker games, of course. Okay? Um, that's, what, that's what baseball does now. And baseball is always done. 1951, the shot heard around the world. That was a tiebreaker game between the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers, right? Brooklyn Dodgers looked like they were going to make another trip to the series. Bobby Thompson hit that home run off Ralph Branca, and it was the shot heard around the world. And you can look it up on YouTube and listen to Giants broadcaster Russ Hodges go nuts. The Giants win the pennant. Giants win the pennant. And he screams it like, oh, I don't know, probably the equivalent of Graham's number for you out there into maths. Okay, so we've got all this set up. Again, go to players. Okay, we're not using fictional player settings, so we don't care about these, so leave these at the default. Okay, we, we're not going to really have to mess around with this. We're not using an amateur draft. Um, I do say leave this one, automatically import historical player creation modifiers. So uh, we do want to do that. So leave this here. See what we have under historical. Um, again, we're not gonna, there's no league we could automatically expand it. We're not going to. You can't use real historical transactions because you're not doing a season replay. Okay. Again, we've done statistical accuracy. We've talked about uh, recalc and all that based on three years. And you heard my little um, homily comparing um, Strat PC's uh, career historical disc versus the far superior Action PC Baseball, Baseball History Project, which, guys, I think goes for like 59 bucks. And believe me, you can do all kinds of stuff. I have, like, I think all the 20th and 21st century for the um, for actually PC baseball. If anybody wants to be kind, and if I had a Patreon, uh, I wouldn't mind a few gifts from the 19th century. But uh, I'm doing this out of love, you guys. So leaving likes is is cool. All right. Uh, so finally, we can go to stats and AI. Um, we can do. Um, what settings you want to import. So, you know, we could set up, let's say, well, let's say 1977. Why not? Okay. So this will import uh, historical financial study. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, let's cancel that. We're just going to just leave it alone. Okay. Typically, you can pick your pick, your your, your uh, rotation. Since we are in 1977 and 1982, you want to leave this probably a five-minute rotation. Um, okay. So looks like we're ready to go. Okay, so let's get back to league. Make sure it looks good here. Uh, its league name is Major League Baseball. You can change that if you want. So let's create a game. Okay, 1982. Create game. Uh, hello, create game. You create game for me, huh? You create game. 
We're waiting for it to create the game. Um, actions. Yes, we have all that. Okay. Uh, no game loaded. Now hang on, this is where it gets weird. Okay, there it is. Start game. I knew it was there. One more time. You you have a chance. You can change. Okay, here's your role, GM and manager. I'm playing this in commissioner mode because I'm just doing freedom. Uh, so you can control other teams. Now here's why. And I, I think more if you're streaming but or recording. But even if you're playing your own games, all right? <clears throat> and this is a comparison between out-of-the-park baseball and action PC baseball. And I know we're running a little long, but I think this is important, okay? And again, more information is better. Information is power. And I can give you a hundred other tropes and cliches if you'd like, okay? And see, it's run up Canadians. No, they're not the turtles anymore. Ooh, the Montreal Warlord, sexy. So you can change any of these. Right now, there's no player, so it doesn't matter, okay? In action PC baseball, and action diamond mine baseball as well, and probably some of the ones that you play with uh, virtual dice that don't have AI, by the way, like uh, National Pastime 3, um, you can just choose to play any two teams throughout the season, okay? So in action PC, for instance, those of you who own action PC baseball, you will see the schedule for that day and you can just select so let's say that you're managing um, the Cleveland and Detroit Tigers because they're my favorite American team so you're managing the Detroit Tigers but you really really want to want to um, manage that Red Sox Yankees game that's going on that day well you can choose to do that too okay with out of the park baseball if you don't check play in commissioner mode you can't do that you are stuck managing and, and unless you check off cannot be fired you're stuck managing the team you selected so uh yeah you, you can maybe see highlights of games and stuff like that but uh so to get the equivalent of action pcs being able to play anything right out of the gate just make sure when you're setting up your league no matter what league it is whether it's a replay whether it's just click and play 2018 season or historical replay, uh, what have you, this is 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 or this is really really I think a good thing to do if you want to do that. And for me, I do for 1934 uh, because I might want to show a few Tiger games, you know, in that 1934 replay because uh, that's who, uh, yeah, right, Tigers Cardinals 1934, right. Okay, so we've got this, and we're going to start game. Finally, we're not going to play any game, right? Because I think you're pretty clear now. In fact, at this point, I'm going to guess that you are. So here we are on our screen. There is our sexy logo. Huh? Pretty cool. There it is. You can change that. I touched on that. Again, please go back to my first video. How to change logos. I'm not going to cover that here. It's just not important. Okay. So, what do we have going on? Okay. If we do play, right, well, there's nothing going on here. Okay. Because there's no game. Okay. And our spring training. Okay. So we go to MLB. And under MLB, select inaugural draft. Now the magic begins. Okay, there's a lot of things you can do with this. So let's say that you're, um, well, you're a bit of a masochist, let's say. Yeah. And and actually, the, it can be fun. Oh, geez, I should have changed. Look at that Pittsburgh Armadillo. It's awful. Anyhow, anyhow, doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, we're looking at this, and you can actually just do, there's three things you can do. You can have the AI just populate every team. I kind of like to do that um, because I want to be surprised. So you, you can do that. Just go bam. And uh, so if we go under actions, we'll be very careful. Okay, so we have all this stuff here. Let's continue draft, um, whatever. But you can set up the type of draft that you want. Okay. Serpentine or straight. Uh, Serpentine's fine, right? Why not? So everybody gets a 
a nice little so so now was Atlanta whatever so it goes down there and then they get and then back up again okay however many number of rounds I usually just leave it at that there's your player pool okay don't worry about this leave this off because you're not using it right okay so if we go to continue draft now notice down here and here's where you can kind of do a cheat draft if you want okay so we're looking here this is the Atlanta Whitecaps okay you here's where I was saying for I'm sorry I said a cheat draft what well, sort of is if you are a masochist you could actually create by dragging and dropping every player for every team you could do that if you wanted maybe what you want to do is you want to say well okay I want to put some players on each team well you can do that if you want um so yeah you could also do um, auto draft for Atlanta you could actually do auto draft and auto draft is going to complete everything but what I'm guessing that Todd wants to do is we're going to do the, the next option is we're just going to do auto draft into a next pick by Baltimore but here you see first right here is the complete player pool nice filters so right now we have all players so you know we got George Brett right you can see there real real pictures much better than face gen right there's Frank Pino there is Rich Gossage we're thinking oh my god you know there's Dick Allen don't call me Richie right Johnny Bench okay you will also notice that these all fall within 1977 to 1982 Your overall rating potential rating uh, right now what this is doing is listing from top all the way down to outliers rookies people that came up with for a cup of coffee uh, what have you so you see there's John Walkenfuss whom we've all I suppose remember John Walkenfuss because what a name right there's his potential so you can filter all these so these are your top draft pick guys right these are the big guys obviously look at the names man Sparky Lyle Nolan Ryan Mike Schmidt uh, Paul Blair uh, Goose Gossage, uh, Reggie Smith, Burt Blylevin, Carlton, Downing, Fairley, Foster, Gritch, Gidry, Hernandez, Hissel, or Heisel, I guess, a Nostalgic Life, my friend uh, Greg. Uh, check out his great baseball channel. He's, he's a huge Tigers fan. That's his favorite team in baseball. Uh, so he'll tell me whether um, I'm actually mispronouncing. Um, I've always pronounce it Hissel, but it might be Heisel. It could be Heil. I don't know. Point being, guys, you got all kinds of stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to auto-draft until next pick by Baltimore. So I'm going to click this. There we go. Now we're back to here, and it's our turn to select for Baltimore. Well, let's see. First thing we want to do is we want to find an ace, right? So let's go to all pitchers. Okay, so now we're at all pitchers, and we have relievers. Uh, yeah, well, you know, let's see. Maybe we, uh, maybe we want to go to starters. Okay, now we're looking better. Well, geez, Ron Guidry. Yeah, I think Ron Guidry would be great for our staff. Okay, so we drag him down there, right, because we see all of the stuff here about, about, or we did, about Guidry, so right, right here, ratings that we talked about. Just like that. So there he is. And we draft him. There we go. So now what happens, and, and don't let this confuse you up here, okay? So down here, what's happening next? St. Louis Wolfhounds, all right? Because again, now you're going through and you're auto drafting. And again, you can auto draft for each team, okay? So it'll say auto draft for St. Louis. So you can see who they're getting, right? At, as the draft goes on so like real life in the draft okay you know that yeah the Red Sox picked up so and so the Yankees picked up so and so um whatever okay so you can do that if you don't want to be surprised if you do want to be surprised I would say just keep doing this and that's what we're going to do just for sake of the video in fact we'll do one here for for auto draft for St. Louis okay there we go so now let's auto draft to next pick by Baltimore I'm not going to do the whole team for Baltimore, okay? 
Now we can go to the scouting director. This is this is helpful because remember, with any draft, notice now, right? Player potential is going down because, of course, you know you're not going to go for the outliers first. Why would you do that? Okay. So we can go to our scouting director. He says we should get Willie Horton. Well, you know what? For my Baltimore team, the Wave Riders, I'm going to say yeah because this is a hell of a hitter here. Right, so and we can see the last pick, St. Louis, right? Because we auto drafted for St. Louis, they picked up Cesar Cedeno, hell of a center fielder. So yeah, I want to, I definitely want a power hitter. So I'm going to pick up Willie Horton. Willie Horton's now on my team. Okay, so that's how you do that. Drag and drop who you want. So let's again, we're going to go and we're going to auto draft until next pick by Baltimore, just for the last time. I could go to my scouting um, director, and again, he's going to give me, uh, you know, a recommendation. Well, you know, maybe I want to pick one. So again, what do I do here? Yeah, you know, that's Storm Davis, who actually played for, for actually played for Baltimore, but yet, wait a minute, here's Bruce Keeson. And uh, it is pronounced Keeson, by the way. Every pirate broadcaster pronounces it Keeson. I've heard it pronounced Kyson. It's actually Bruce Keeson. I want a bucko on my team. So I'm going to drag him here. Now I can choose to draft him, or I can go to my scouting director. And if I want to draft him again, I'm just going to click here, the draft player. Or I can go to the scouting director, and he's saying, nah, you need Bob Horner. Well, Bob Horner, pretty good hitter. And I already <clears throat> know that I've got... Uh, that I've got a pretty good hitter on my team. So, yeah, I'm going to draft Horner. Okay. So, now we know how to do this. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is complete the draft now the fast way. Maybe I want to be surprised, but actually it's because this video is going really long. So, auto draft. I can do this by round. So, I can just complete the current round or I can complete the draft. I'm going to complete the draft. And yes, that's my dog barking because it is here, starts setting off fire for New Year's. And um, I hate that because it scares the dogs. And they started actually doing this. Jackson. They actually started doing this back on uh, December 17th. So, Nation of Atheists. So, anyhow, what we're going to do here is we're going to finish the entire draft automatically. So, we're going to click OK. So all the drafts are being done for every team, including yours, okay? Draft is over, okay? And you can have it um, to initially set up the team. I always just do yes, why not? Okay, there we go. Now, I should have said on the last screen that you could have looked at the draft log. If you want to do that, you can. Okay, so what do we have here? Remember what I talked about coaches and assistants GM? You're not going to get... Unless these guys played Major League Baseball, or if you really are anal about this, yeah, go for it. Okay. So, here's our position overall. This is who we have. Again, you can see Willie really Horton, but these are just position overviews. But let's get into it now. All right. We're going to look at who the Baltimore Wave Riders have. All right. Our wave Riders. So, we have our top players, right? Look at that. So, uh, we got you know, Gidry Figueroa and Willie Horton. I would say that's a nice start to any team. Okay. Uh, we can see three of our top prospects, like Larry Demery, the pitcher for the Bucks. Uh, Bob Horner, Ken Oberkfeld, decent. Again, you could trade him if you wanted, but uh, Oberkfeld, um, as the Pirates were rebuilding in the late 80s, uh, he, was, uh, yeah, he was around, he was hanging out. But we're going to go to our home page. Not much here. Here's our primary lineup. Look, we got some speed, right? We run the floor, Bill Allman. You can change all this if you want. Um, this is pretty nice. Look at this. Al, there's Dewey, Dwight Evans, which you've never told me why he's called Dewey. Um, but that's okay. Uh, Butch Winnegar. This is, this looks like a really, really good team. Yeah, I like this. Uh, it's a pretty decent rotation. Uh, Gidry Figueroa. I don't know uh, much about Ken Kravick. I suppose 
Uh, somebody uh, looks like he's wearing a Cubs hat. Maybe a Cubbies fan knows about that. Steve Trout, pretty good. Okay. So, yeah, bullpen, right? You got Steve Bedrosian. We got him as the closer here. Pretty nice. Okay. So, I would say, and, and you can see also here, guys, it also assigns the roles. So, Bedrosian is closer. I don't think I'd want to change that. He's a great closer. But you could change any one of these. If you wanted to be crazy and make Steve Bedrosian a middle reliever, you could. And you could make uh, Larry Demmer your closer. I would say don't do that, of course. Okay, but let's go to players. Okay. Well, we're kind of looking. It's like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Look at all this kind of stuff. And pictures. And we can, if you click on any of their names, you're going to see all their ratings and, and, and stuff like that. Okay. We can ask it to fill, um, to, to set up the team with complete, uh, complete team with lineups, etc. Let's do that just for fun. Again, this is sort of all non-destructive now that we're into this, so you can change what you want. Really important. It's, not, it's, it's, it's sort of uh, non-destructive editing, as we say in the in uh, 3D community, right? So we can look at. Uh, you know, rosters, transactions, but uh, actually what we want to do, let's go back to players. Um, we can look at our pitching, look at all the guys on pitching. Here's where you can set, and this is really nice, and again, you're not going to get this from Digital Diamond Baseball. You're not going to get this from, uh, well, you're not going to get this from a lot of other games, frankly. This is what makes Out of the Park so amazing, okay? So here you can change roles. Uh, you know, maybe maybe with Matt Wilcox, maybe you just want to do avoid high leverage, huge less options, whatever you want to do. You want to change closer. You want to change Bedrosian from your stopper, uh, or you know, to to set up, or you want to make him a specialist. Um, so Clinton Parks and I, Clinton Parks, call that girly man baseball, setting up some guy to. Right, one guy's job is to come in and get out a left-handed batter. John McGraw would freak at something like that. Okay, let's look at our strategy though. So we have our lineups. So we have our lineups versus uh, right-handed pitchers. Um, DH. Right. So we have we have that, and of course we could also look at um, right left-handers versus DH. So uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a difference there. Yep, there is. So they basically switched Winnegar and Putnam. Uh, but let's go to our graph graphical depth chart. I really, really like this. Nice feature. And again, you can you, you have this in other other games as well. Okay. So we see that, that, that here's our here's what we have. These are our starters. Uh, these are the guys that you can sub in if you want. And again, you can go and um, you know change these. So Right. Let's look at um, how about if you're playing interleague play. OK, so just versus a right hand pitcher and no DH. All right. So now, look, we've got a couple more things. Well, OK, you might want to bring in uh, Carlos Castillo for Dwight Evans um, if tired. Or maybe you want to give Castillo some innings or right. Give him some work, give him some games. So maybe every fifth game. I don't know. Maybe you're gonna let Cast you're gonna have Castillo start every fifth game, okay? So again, and for guys like Ron LaFleur, you can go in and, and of course it's baseball. So you know maybe you might have to move Willie Horton over to center in the course of the game, okay? So graphical depth chart, really, really, really nice, okay? Uh, let's look at our lineups overview. There we can see everything. So, uh, assuming this is, yes it is, it's an American League, uh, assuming it's an American League team, let's say. All right. So if they're playing interleague and they're playing a National League team, here's your lineups. Again, you can change these. Okay. And then here's your lineups, lefties, righties versus designated hitters. Okay. You can look at seven day lineups. Uh, right now, of course, we can't see that. Because we're still in January, we just finished um, the inaugural draft. So that would be if we go to schedule. But if we go to April, there we go. We see 
Let's start. Let's see. Does this is this? Uh, yeah. So this this season is going to start April seventh. There it is. So there's Baltimore. There's their uh, there's their schedule. Okay. You can open this in the external browser if you want. I'm not going to. That's the point. Okay. This will all fill up as you know. Okay. Now, um, I did say to refer to video one for ballparks, but I will do one ballpark here to show you how it's done. Um, just because it's weird. Okay. So just this once, just this once. So we're going to go to the team home screen now. So here's our team home screen. So remember, let me save this game, right? Because I don't want to lose all this. Be my luck through all of this. I get a crash. Um, and then, geez, I got to start all over. All right. How to set up a ballpark. All right. I'm going to just do it just for the wave riders. If you want to see this process done a couple of times, either rewind this or go back to part one, my, my first OOTP tutorial. Okay. All right. Settings, right? Because you'd think, wow, somewhere, where is it? <laughs> settings. It's under settings. There's ballpark, memorial stadium. The name doesn't really matter. Okay, it really, really doesn't matter. Um, so, but we're going to change it. And and just for if you want to, and if you want to do this, this would mean a third part, a third tutorial. If you want, leave in the comments. If you want a tutorial on how to download and install 3D models, because Out of the Park features 3D models, and you, of course, you can play with just 2D pictures. But why would you, right? So, but you'll notice here. Right, we're talking about 1977, so right, where's Camden Yards? Well, it's not there, man, because there was no Camden Yards. Okay, so it defaults to Memorial Stadium. That's what it's. It's. It, but that is not what it's going to look for. Here's what it's going to do. So we're here. This uh, colors, logos, textures covered in part one, and I don't mean to sort of pad things out. Or get you guys to go back and look at another video, but I gotta ask you to do that, please. Okay. Alright. So let's go to edit ballpark. This is what we want. So we have edit ballpark. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, well yeah, sure, Major League Baseball, Memorial Stadium, I'm ready to go. Well, no, you're not. The next thing you have to do, and you'd think, oh, 3D model. No, 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 no. Pictures and coordinates. Down here, see, 3D model, use default model. There's a default model, 3D park, in addition to the 30 current baseball parks, okay, that come with Out of the Park 19. The default model is really generic. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty. It's a nice 3D model, but it's generic, right? So, I mean, you're, you know, you're managing, okay, even though, Right. And there are also fictional parts you can get, but again, leave in the comments if you want how to install ballparks. I'll do a third one. Um, it's Installing ballparks is really easy, or downloading ballparks and installing. It's actually very, very easy. It'll probably be, um, for most people, five-minute video for as much as I talk, 25 minutes, but you'll get the idea. So I don't want to use the default model, so I'm just going to select File. Okay, and I'm going to go up, <clears throat> and here you can see my directory, and I haven't downloaded every part for Out of the Park, but I have lots. I have lots. So, um, okay, you know what? Let's keep it as it is. And we're going to let me see Memorial Stadium, it says here. Um, so, obviously, this is what it would have been modeled at. This is, I'm sure, since been updated. Always check the Out of the Park site for updates on 3D models. We're going to select this, and I'm going to select this object file, and I'm going to click load. Okay, so now it's going to look for this. Now if I click on 3D model, and we wait, we wait, there we go. Now these are homemade. Uh, obviously, probably going to have to mess around with this. This is, um, I don't know uh, why, they put the light standards in there. 
Um, I think it's kind of weird. Um, yeah. If you're not caring about complete accuracy as far as what it looks like, whatever, I'm not really sure. There's probably ways you can. There are ways you can move the light standards and stuff like that. Um, I'm definitely not going to get into that. That that would be a huge tutorial and have to draw on um, some 3D knowledge. And I believe these were done in Google SketchUp, which is, um, I'm going to ask um, Out of the Park Baseball if they will allow um, the use of Blender or Real, th or, uh, yeah, Blender or ZBrush uh, for better ballparks. Um, I don't use SketchUp um, to get the full pack. The, the basic package is free, but it's, it's absolutely so limited. Whereas Blender, with its new release about to come out, it's already been used by Pixar. And everything is a free program so see if uh, I mean there will be support in the sense that this is an object file so OBJ stands for wavefront object file wavefront uh, is an industry standard 3d application which has the happy ability of object files um, for any any application that uses uh, 3d files so that can be anything from, of course, out of the park baseball um, to to moving things in and out from different programs like 3D Max, True Space, um, Daz Studio, Poser, um, uh, Make Human, all those other programs, right? Object files are portable, so you can think of these as PNG files, you know, the same way as PNG files. Actually, no, more accurately, JPEGs. Right, because PNGs are usually, um, while they are, you know, they migrate, they're usually used with um, Photoshop, which uh, if my friend, um, Nostalgic Life, Greg is listening, uh, Greg, I noticed that you use paint um, when you're doing your, your brackets and everything for your playoffs. Um, you really ought to invest... And you don't even have to like buy Photoshop. Adobe has a very reasonable, it's like a monthly or yearly uh, cost to use their whole suite of programs. Um, and trust me, I can give you a few lessons in Photoshop if you've never used it because you're mainly working with what would be called layers. I'll teach you, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I like what you're doing, um, but I noticed that you were having some problems in your video because you were getting image loss. Um, with Photoshop, you won't have that, and I can teach you the magic of TIFF files. All right, well, anyhow, yeah, light standards, maybe they were there. I have no idea. I don't know what this park looked like in 1950, but there it is. Now, notice this. You guys notice this? How cool is that? All right, I can move this puppy this way. I can move him out. I can zoom in, whatever. What I'm basically doing is I'm setting up the camera. So maybe I want this sort of little look here. I can't believe that the light standards were actually here on the field. I'm guessing the guy who did this, um, when he first put this up, probably made a mistake in the 3D, which means I need to go in and update this park if I ever want to use it. So do check for an update um, and out of the park for this. Because imagine how many first and third basemen might have been killed by this, right? <clears throat> I just don't, I can't, I think this was a mistake, so probably picked a bad part here. But for teaching purposes, it's fine. All right, so let's say this is the angle I want. This is where I want in the field for the over for the overview. All I have to do here then, guys, is click Save Cam. I'm not going to create a new cam. I'm just going to update the current cam. If you create new cam, right, then give it names and stuff like that. So let's just do Update Current. All right, and we're set. That's it. That's it, guys. So then we can go back to our manager's office. Uh, pro tip, you can do all kinds of things from different pages, from, from, uh, from your manager page and from your team page or just from the play page. I do everything from my manager page. That's what I would suggest you do see where you are on the season. So in this case, I mean, this one case, go all the way down and you can do the spring training. 
All right. I didn't assign any other parks to any other clubs, by the way. I'm not going to do that. I doubt that I'm going to keep this league. This is just for tutorial purposes. I will leave it um, in my save game directory. Okay. Uh, just in case there are any questions, and I can also uh, refer back to this. Okay, we're at March 2nd. Okay, so we have uh, just some news here, right there. There we go. McGregor hired in Baltimore, and the top 100 prospects, and here's my owner goals and owners and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so again, we're going to play, and this time we're going to auto play to opening event, opening day. So it's going to play all this out. It's simulating everything. It's going to stop every once in a while, probably, or may stop as it did. If something happens, if something major happens, I don't know that that will. You can see it's keeping track here of all spring training stats. Okay, it looks like we're done. So everything is being calculated, and we're getting set up for opening day. And always read. A little trivias are nice. Some of them are really fun. So predictions. I mean, we're there, guys. Um, and I've received a personal message from Hunter Conaway, right? And he is telling me, this is what I want. I am the owner, yada, yada, yada. So you can do all that kind of stuff, okay? But remember, we can't be fired. How cool is that? All right, so back to your manager's office, okay? Uh, let me touch on something really quickly before I complete this, because I don't think we're going to play a game. I don't think you guys want to sit through a, a game of this. If you do, I'll leave it up, and I'll actually do one, just so you can see how they play out. Um... There's available jobs. Now remember, I set this up to be commissioner. I can I can take control of, and this is what I was talking about, you can take control of any team. So I can do that. I'm not going to, but, but uh, there you go. Let's go back to our manager's office. We can autoplay until the next game. Okay. And like I said, I like to do most stuff here from the manager screen. And when I click play ball, we will be playing our opening day against the Texas prospects. I hope, you guys, that this has helped you. Uh, specifically, Todd, I hope this has helped you. And Alexander, I hope this um, answers some questions for you. Um, if you guys want, I can also do another video to show you how to set up uh, tournaments for great teams. Alexander figured that one out pretty much on his own. It's really pretty easy. Again, you're just working from the his create historical game. That one's pretty much your best friend. The custom game thing will do what we've just done. I don't think it's as streamlined. So I've given you a lot of information. Let me check the length of this video. I know it's long. Yeah, we're coming up. Uh, yeah, we're at two hours. I'm sorry about that. Um, but again, it's important to me that you get the information that you need. And certainly, uh, I like to do these as interactive tutorials, um, but I wanted to get this one up because I know that Todd wanted to do this. Elit Mike, I think you mentioned something similar. I know that Alexander wanted to do this um, as well or something similar. Uh, guys, thank you for watching this recording. I hope this answers your question. Please like and please comment. Comments are always helpful. Not only because I'm trying to build my humble channel, I'm not trying to make money from it, I just want to build it and bring baseball to the masses. But also, if you have any questions, right, no instructor is perfect. Maybe there was something that I wasn't clear on. And then what I can do is post a brief video, which will be just answering questions about part two of this Out of the Park tutorial. Um, I would again refer you to my Out of the Park part one tutorial for... Uh, more information about installing ballparks because I do it like three times um, in that. I talk about how you can change logos, things like that. So do check that out. And I appreciate when you guys come in to watch games. I don't expect you to when I'm streaming, of course, but it, it's, uh, it's nice that we can share the time together, as Carol Burnett would sing, right? 
So that's very cool that you do that. But even if you watch these and, and that's all good. All right. If you happen to do, if you're somebody that's new to my channel or something and you leave a dislike, I would just ask this. Would you please, you know, just give me some constructive criticism. Um, I do see on channels where people will leave dislikes, but, and, and, and be nice, please, constructive criticism, right? Because I don't think any of us have agendas here, all right? Just tell me, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I, I've been too verbose, or maybe I skimmed over a part that I shouldn't have or whatever, okay? It's really, really important to me and important to you, all right? Because we're a community and learning happens best in communities, okay? All right, guys. So hopefully you've taken away a lot. I know it's a lot of information, but you have to remember, and this is, I'll close with this, with a program such as this, right, with the amount of things that you can do, which is absolutely mind-boggling, it's going to take longer to explain what you can do. But once you do it a couple times, then, right, I could have just blown through this and done it in 10 minutes, but that doesn't help, right? It doesn't help you guys. I need for you as an educator to understand and for you as partners in this educational uh, endeavor to understand exactly or as close to exactly as what's going on. All right. I want to thank all the supporters of my channel. I want to thank Todd B. I want to thank Elit Mike and I want to thank Alexander Raffini. Uh, and again, please check out Alexander's channel. Um, I want to thank them for um, asking for tutorials. Um, I'm certainly pleased to do that. It makes me feel like I have some purpose in this community other than just some guy that streams games. All right, guys, until the next live or the next recording, thank you again, and keep looking up. Bye now.